Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Indiana Overtime. I'm Seth Tao, that's Greg Gottfried, IDS basketball columnist. Um, we are in Columbus at the Value City Arena, or the shot as it's called here. Uh, Indiana ends its regular season in the win column, 96-92. Uh, uh, wasn't the prettiest win. They, Indiana was up by 18 at one point, but of course Ohio State came back, had the lead at one point in the second half. But um, what, what stood out to you today the most? Well, you're right. It was a win. And that's a good thing for this team, I guess, with how far things have fallen. Um, I think the thing that stands out is Robert Johnson hit a three. He scored 26 points overall, played really well in the first half. A big reason of why they got that big 18-point lead at one point. Um, and the shooter shot, and Blackman too. Uh, New Kirk hit some threes. Uh, Devonte hit one. And the only points off the bench. It was just... They hit shots, so that was nice at least. Yeah, Indiana was shooting really hot in the first. I mean, they were they shot I think seventy nine percent or something like that. In they the were first ninety percent at one point. I think in like it, I think six minutes. In. I think at halftime it was like seventy percent yeah. or seventy nine percent or something like that, which is I mean absurd. Yeah. But um, yeah, Robert Johnson broke out of his slump, shot ten of seventeen for twenty six points. James Blackman also had over twenty and twenty two. Everyone, all the starters had double digit points, and like you said, I mean, Devontae Green's three ball was the only points Indiana got off the bench. Um, but really, in the first half, we were kind of just talking about this like, Indiana's hot shooting really masked really poor defense in the first half. And in the second half, when Indiana cooled off, that defense just came to light a lot more. I mean, everything that we've seen bad defensively from this team this entire season was all thrown into one game today, especially in the second half, where Ohio State went on that 10-0 run at one point. I mean, they weren't guarding their men. They were just attacking the boards instead of watching their, instead of boxing out. Like, they just weren't doing smart basketball plays. And the three-point shots were open, as you said, before we even started this, especially in the corners. Uh, sitting next to the bench, the players on the bench and the coaches were infuriated with how, de how they were defensively, like, rotating. Yeah, I mean, it was really, Poor. I mean, there were so many times where Thomas Bryant, there was just no guard, like guard uh, covering a man in the corner, and Thomas Bryant had to leave the post and step out on a three just to make sure someone had a hand up over there. And I mean, usually that was all for naught. I mean, Indiana's just very lucky that Ohio State isn't a better, wasn't a better three-point shooting team today. Ohio State would have won. Yeah, that's the only reason Ohio State was even hanging around early in this game when Indiana was shooting so well is that IU was spotting with so many open looks from downtown. But, I mean, Indiana's offense in the end really came to life today, yeah. and it was just too much for Ohio State. Juwan Morgan, especially in the last few minutes, uh, he had a few and one plays. I think he missed one of those free throws. We had a few just attacking the rim, just, it was him. He was, I'm gonna score, that's what he said. He didn't actually say it, if you knew that. He just thought it, maybe, maybe he did say it, I don't know. Um, I, I thought he played well. I thought the team played pretty well offensively. I mean, they scored 96 points. It was the defense, such a big problem. Yeah, I mean, you you mentioned good finishing at the rim. Indi in can you that? Yeah, oh, I'd love <laughs> to. Yeah, in the Indiana, uh, they had a lot of really good, not just Juwan Morgan, a lot of who really were finishing strong at the rim today. Josh Newkirk, yeah. uh, especially in the first half, had a lot of and ones. Blackman and Bryant, yeah, too, yeah in the second exactly. half. Exactly, there were a lot, there were a lot of and ones. In Indiana finished even with Ohio State in number of free throws attempted. A lot of those came at the end of the game when Ohio State had to foul to extend the game. Still some but a lot. But I would say, I don't, I don't know what the exact number is, but a good number of those are probably and ones. Indiana was good at drawing fouls today. Um, and meanwhile also, foul trouble has been a talking point of late. Indiana did get into foul trouble again, but I thought they managed it pretty well. Yeah, I mean, even though the bench didn't score, I thought McRoberts played good defensive, good defensive minutes. I mean, I guess that was kind of it. That's where I was going. The, the bench, it's just a problem right now. It's just there's no one who can come off the bench and really score. And I know we like the team has lost Ananobi. They lost Hartman before. And they were supposed to have some more depth going into the season. But you would think McSwain at this point, Devontae Green, Curtis Jones, they would give this team a little bit more oomph. And right now they're not getting it. Well, Devontae Green, the past few games, has mm -hmm. been scoring a decent amount. He, did, he only had three points today, but he only attempted two shots. Yeah. And I mean, I think he was just kind of dishing it off because he knew the starters were hot. Um, so I mean, you have him as kind of your sixth man off the bench. 
I mean, Deron Davis has also shown that he can score at times, and he had a little trouble today. But I mean, also, he was feeding Thomas Bryant mm -hmm. a lot from uh, the post. But I was kind of saying that all the star all five starters finished with three or four fouls, and I thought they were really. I thought the coaches were very smart in how they su how they subbed out players. Not necessarily who and how the subs performed, but I thought they were smart in the rotations that they used, how they managed that, managed the game. They rolled the dice a few, like Preen said after the game, they rolled the dice a few times and they won, but sometimes you're going to have to yeah. do that with foul trouble. I mean, if in, I remember I said that when Thomas Bryan picked up his fourth foul, I knew it was kind of risky for them to leave Bryan in the game. Smart. But ulti yeah, ultimately they may not have won the game if they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, uh, Indiana moves to 17 and 14, 7 and 11 in the Big Ten with the win. Uh, that will, that's their final regular regular season uh, record. They will have to wait until tomorrow, or I guess this will go on the site tomorrow. But uh, they will have to wait until Sunday. They'll have to wait. Yeah, <laughs> they'll have to wait until Sunday to find out who they're playing in the Big Ten tournament and when they're playing in the Big Ten tournament. They could either be playing Michigan. Iowa or Rutgers. Uh, it depends on the Mid Michigan Nebraska game and the Iowa Penn State game. Mm -hmm. If Nebraska beats Michigan, then Indiana's playing Rutgers on Wednesday. If Michigan beats Nebraska, and then it depends on whether or not Iowa wins, and they'll play either Michigan or Iowa on Thursday. So I'm guessing that the Hoosiers are going to be putting on their maize and blue tomorrow. Um, but that's all I do. You have anything else from the game today? I mean, they kind of clinched the NIT bid, so <laughs> that's that's something. I still don't know if I'd call it a lock. I mean, I think I think, I, I, I think it's still a question. If 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 they go to DC again and lose to Rutgers, I think it's still a question. But I think, but if, if with the last few games, with the Northwestern victory and this one, they've at least put themselves in the running, yeah. and they're they're right there. They're, they're in a good place to probably get into the NIT. Yeah. We'll see what... <laughs> <laughs> what a sad... <laughs> that that oh, sad. <laughs> this team was Who thought we'd be saying that? They were third in the number. nation at one point. They were ranked number three. And now they can't even be one of the top... What would it be? It would be 68 plus 32. T top 100 teams? Yeah. Is that the math? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. So... Uh, fun times. <laughs> yeah. What a time to be alive. All right. For Greg Gottfried, I'm Seth Tao. Thanks for watching, and we will talk to you later. That's how you wrap it up. <laughs>